Here we have an SS laptop that came in for no power. We already disassembled the board and we noticed a ripped battery connector right here. So in addition to the laptop not working, we also have a ripped battery connector. If we look at the battery connector area, we can see that we have the data and clock lines missing or ripped off. We do have some traces left right here. And I believe this trace connects here and this one connects here. That's probably ground and ground. We can restore the pads here by connecting to those. Or I believe this trace is connecting here. It should not go anywhere else. Unless it's going to back of the board. I do not recall where this trace is going to. But what we can do is we can grind the tip of the trace and then we can measure with a multimeter from here to here to see if we have a continuous path. If yes, then we can likely run the wire from here all the way here and we can run the wire from here all the way here. We already have the paths for ground and positive. That's not a problem. So the battery connector we can take care of and the good thing is the battery connector is connected to the battery. It broke off on the battery itself. Those connectors are nowhere available to buy. So we have to take them off a donor board. Luckily, we have the connector here and we can use it. But we can do this last. We have to take care of the no power issue. It doesn't make sense to fix the battery connector if the motherboard has problems. The motherboard is not turning on. So why fix a battery connector? We have to tackle the issue and fix the motherboard first. Now we have the charging connector, the DC charging connector right here. And I'm zoomed in all the way. Let me zoom out a bit and we're going to decrease the brightness a bit. Everything is so bright. We do not have a short here. 2.1 voltage drop and 2.1 voltage drop. The power MOSFETs are not anywhere to be found on this side of the board, so we have to flip the board. Probably on back of the board. Right there. If we measure here on the drain, we have a short, like always. What's new with Asus laptops? What's new? People ask me, which laptop should I buy? I would tell you, do not buy any laptop because all of them fail. If you are serious about, let's say, graphic design, video editing, or you are a gamer and you want something powerful, you would go for a desktop. You would not go for a laptop. Those laptops are not portable. They are heavy. Why would you want to buy a laptop? Build yourself a desktop and forget laptops. All gaming laptops fail. Which one is better? There's no better. All of them are the same. Maybe we see a lot of Asus laptops because that's what people buy. We get at least 5 to 10 Asus laptops a day, at least. And all of them have a short circuit. All of them fail. And customers tell me they took very good care of the laptop, but the laptop still failed. So now that we have a short here, we can inject voltage like we always do. And then we can monitor the board under a thermal camera and see what gets hot. We want to do this as efficient as possible. And we want to find out the problem as fast as possible. Efficiency is what it's all about. When you spend two, three, four hours fixing a laptop, you're actually losing. You may be happy that you fixed it, but end of the day, you're not efficient and you lost. Usually most laptops, I'm able to pinpoint the problem within the first few minutes. Some laptops, they take more, more time. But usually with Asus laptops, because I work on them every day, I'm usually able to find out the problem quick. So let's see if we are able to find out the problem quick with this one. We need to inject voltage and I need to flip the board at the same time. So I'm holding the thermal camera with one hand because I do not have a stand for it. And I have another thermal camera that was sent to us by a factory that makes thermal cameras. I'm not going to go over it today. I'm still testing. But what I like about it is... I have it on a stand like this. Very nice and very efficient and it looks good so far, but I'm still communicating with the factory so we can carry it, but I want to make sure that I like it first before we carry it. What I need to do now is I need to hold the thermal camera, look at the camera, and I need to point my probe onto that MOSFET on the board, like so, and the short is most likely front of the board and not the back, based on my experience working on those boards. And right now the board is drawing 4 amps. Let's see 
if we see anything hot on the board and I do I see. yeah I do where is the heat coming from my floor cam has a laser pointer and right now I can tell okay I can tell heat is coming from this side of the board okay I wish all thermal cameras have laser pointers and it's a cheap option to implement in a thermal camera I do not know why they do not do it okay so heat is coming from here strange because all the ASUS laptops that I fixed I never had to deal with this area before I see a big capacitor here but I never had to replace this capacitor before on this side of the board and the cap looks good let's measure and see if the cap is short into ground and yes the cap is shorting even though it looks good it looks in perfect condition we do not see any burn marks we do not see any cracks discoloration nothing let's go ahead and remove the cap and see what happens it's a big cap so I'm gonna use my hot tweezers with the help of hot air so we can do it ASAP and we're gonna keep the cap in case the problem is not the cap thermal camera showed me heat here and heat in this area is likely due to the cap and not the MOSFETs those they rarely go bad rarely the G4 MOSFETs if we do come across a short on the G4 MOSFET it's likely not the MOSFET itself but it's something else that's causing the MOSFET to short that's my experience working with those MOSFETs on ASUS laptops do we have a short? and the short is gone ground here and we have 0 0.4 voltage drop what if we measure the capacitor both ends we have a short you see we got it we did it how long did it take not four hours not three hours not two hours not one hour not half an hour one minute that's efficiency because we got a viewer on our channel he commented and he wrote how come you do not probe and test voltage rails you just go to the problem you never probe or or measure or waste time basically what good is your experience if you're not able to fix a device quick that's what experience is all about it makes you more efficient you make the same amount of money but you spend less time I figured out the problem in one minute but the customer is still paying full price that's where experience pays we do not charge more money we charge the same money but we spend less time let's grab a cap and you can purchase both the Aero 5 and 1206 the ones that are most commonly used on ASUS laptops from our site just log in to northwishfix.com click on shop and you can purchase all your tools from there and I keep mentioning this for all new viewers on the channel most of you watching those videos you already know about our shop and most of you buy from our shop it takes a lot of time and work to make those products available the communication with the factories and all the different type of factories that we work with and our branding and customs and tax and shipping and packaging it's hard work it's a lot of work you think it's easy it's hard work so the size is 805 and I have it right here and you can tell we already used one two three four caps when you purchase you're buying 10 caps in a strip like this we already used four out of ten the caps that we are using are high quality caps we pay more money for those caps hopefully the ones that we are using are a lot better because we are paying more money for those caps we are done and the laptop should power on now assuming we no longer have a short and we should not 
Let's go to the battery area, fix the battery, the battery connector. And then we can hand this over to Big Boss to reassemble and test. Invoice the customer, mail it back to him, and then proceed to fix another Asus laptop. Let's use our Northridge Fix V2 grinding pen. I'm going to grind the tip of the wire. I just want to see where that wire is going. I believe the wire is going here, and this one is going here. Okay. Now we have this one. Oh, this one is gone. This one is gone with the wind. No problem. If that trace want to play games, no problem. When will those boards learn that they cannot play games? When? Let's measure from here. Yes. So this trace is connecting here, and this one is connecting here. I think they learned now that even if we lost the trace, we know where that trace is going. That's how you teach motherboards a lesson. You have to know how to communicate with the motherboard. Speak the motherboard language. Because if you're not a fox, you're going to be eaten by foxes. For this, we cannot use our normal, regular soldering iron from Weller. And this one is 0.4 millimeter tip. Look at how big that tip is. You're talking about half a millimeter. Crazy. We're going to be using our NF.mini pen. And we should be able... We have solder on the tip now, and that's why it looks big. But we should be able to solder this and this. I can even go for a smaller tip. Let's grab pad strips number four. And you can find those on our website as well. We have pad strips one, two, three, and four. Different shape solder strips. And I had viewers tell me that it's hard to remove those strips. I totally agree. It was not like that before. The glue on the sheet is a little bit too much. But I'll communicate with the factory so we can make it less sticky next time. For now, if you want, you can add a little bit of alcohol on the sheet and you should be able to easily remove the strip. I mean, I did not add anything now and I was able to just remove it. If your tweezer is too thick, then it's going to be hard. You need super fine tweezers to grab those strips. They are microscopic. So if you are using the wrong tweezer, then it's not going to work out. Just like that. Right now I'm using a combination of the ring light and anti-glare light. Just add a tiny bit of flux. And that's the beauty of the NF.mini pen. We did it. So we did one. And now we're going to do the other one. We can get rid of this and we can solder the pad strip from here all the way here. Let's grab another pad strip. We're going to grab our NF.mini pen again. Maybe we can zoom in. Why not zoom in? Why? Let's use our anti-glare light and turn off our ring light. Just like that. We're going to apply the Northridge Fix green solder mask. And now we're going to use our UV light. Just press the button once. We're going to leave it on the board like this until the light goes off by itself. It has a timer. Built-in timer. It will go off in about maybe 20 seconds or 30 seconds. Maybe we can go over it twice. When it goes off, we're going to turn it back on again. So the mask hardens really good. Right, and we're good. Those pads are not going anywhere. Let's go ahead and thin those pads.
just like that. And maybe we can tend the others also while at it. And right now we need to do a couple of things. We need to remove whatever pads are left over on the pins here. Just like that. And we also need to remove that metal bracket. You see how that bracket is covering the pins? So we're not going to be able to properly solder those pins. What we need to do is we need to push the bracket out from the edges. Just like that. And we can put it later on. All right, and the connector is solid from one side, but we're going to go over it again, make sure everything is soldered on nicely. If we measure from here to here, to here, to here, very good. And if we measure from here to here, to here, very good. And if we measure from here to here, very good. And from here to here, very good. We did it. The connector is super solid and it's soldered on from all sides. That's the bracket. All right, and we are done. We soldered the connector right over here. I'm gonna hand over the board to Big Boss to reassemble and test and I'll be back to finish the video. Big Boss is done with the reassembly of the laptop. And perfect. Laptop is working and the battery is currently charging. If we unplug, battery was not working before, we plugged the charging cable, and right now the laptop is working without a charger. Awesome. We're done. I hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know what you think. Leave it down in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll do something else in the next video.